Krishna and welcome again to all the devotees online. Thank you very much for your kind presence and association as we continue associating with Srimad Bhagavatam. 
Canto 2, Chapter 7, Verses 26 to 35, Schedule Incarnations with Specific Functions. Om Magyana Timi Vandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasme Shri Nguruve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam one day, hum Shri Guru Shri Thapada Kamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamscha E Krishna Karuna Sindo Dina Bando Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastute Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Rade Vrinda Vaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Pancha Kalpata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bevacha Patitanam Pavine Bio Vaishnave Bio Namo Namaha Namo Mishnu Badaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamiti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishe Sasunyavadi Pastyata Disatarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Garadar Shivasari Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Sarva Shastra Piyusha Sarva Vedeka Satvala Sarva Siddhanta Ratnadiya Sarva Loka Triprada Sarva Bhagavata Prana Srimad Bhagavata Prabhu Kali Dvando Didaditya Shri Krishna Parivartita O Srimad Bhagavatam O nectar churn from the ocean of all Vedic scriptures. O most prominent transcendent fruit of all the Vedas. O you are enriched with the jewels of all spiritual philosophical conclusions. O you who grant spiritual vision to all the people of the world. O light breath of the Vaishnava devotees. O Lord, you are a sun which has arisen to dispel the darkness of Kali Yuga. You are actually, you are actually a Krishna who has returned amongst us. Paramananda Pataya Prema Varshasharayate Sarvada Sarva Sevyaya Shikrishnaya Namastute O Shimad Bhagavatam I offer respectful obeisance unto you. By reading you unattain transcendental bliss, for your soul was rain pure love could upon the reader. You are always to be served by everyone for your incarnation of Lord Krishna. Madekabando Mat Sangim Mat Guru Man Mahadana Man Nishtarakamad Bhagya Madananda Namastute O Shimad Bhagavatam O my only friend, O my companion, O my teacher, O my great wealth, O my deliverer, O my good fortune, O my bliss, I offer respectful obeisance unto you. Asadu sadu tadahi natti ni chocha taraka hanamun chakada chinmam premna ritkati ospura. O Shimad Bhagavatam, O give our saintliness to the unsaintly. O uplifter very fallen, please do not ever leave me. Please become manifest. Mahatma throat, accompany a pure love of Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Janmadhyasya Yotan Vayaditaratas Charte Swabhigna Swarahat Tene Brahma Hedaya Adikavaye Muyanti Yat Suraya Tejo Vari Mridam Yatha Vinimayo Yatrati Sargo Mursha Damna Svena Sadani Rasta Kuakam Satyam Param Dimai O my Lord Shri Krishna, Son of Vasudev, O pervading person out of God, I offer my respectful obeisance unto you. I made it upon Lord Shri Krishna because he's the absolute truth and the primal cause of all causes of creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He's directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations and he's independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahma, the original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion as one is bewildered by the loser representation of water seen in fire, land seen on water. Only because of him did the material universes temporarily manifest by the reactions of the three modes of nature are perfectual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Shri Krishna, who is eternally existent in transcendental abode, which is forever free from loser representation of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Prayanal Paisha Sabya Kalavas Minyuge Jana Manda Sumanda Matayo Manda Bhag Yupadrata Ulanad one in this image of Kali, men about short lives, a quarrelsome, lazy, misguided, unlucky, and above all, always disturbed. Narayana Maskrita Narachevam Narotamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tojaya Mudirayat before reciting the Shrimad Bhagavatam, which is a very means of conquest. One should offer respectful obeisance unto the personality of God at Narayan, unto Nara Narayan, which is the supermost human being, and the mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and unto Shila Vyasadeva, the author. Savaipum sapar odharma yato bhakti radokshaja hoitaka pratiyata yatma supersedati 
<clears throat> the supreme occupation, Dharma, of all humanity is that by which man can attain to loving devotional service unto the transcendent Lord. Such devotional service must be unmotivated, uninterrupted, completely satisfy the self. Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojita Janaya Chusavara Gyam Gyanam Chayadahitukam. By rendering devotional service unto the person who is a Gaurya Chikvishna, one immediately acquires causes knowledge and detachment from the world. Vadanti Tattatovidas Tattvam Yaj Gnanam Advayam Brahmeti Paramatmeti Bhagavan Iti Sabyate, learned transcendentalist who know the absolute truth, calls non dual substance Brahman Paramatma Bhagavan. Shru Shru Shoshadrana Sya Vasudeva Kataruchi Syan Mahatsavaya Pipra Punya Tirtan Ishevanat. Otherwise, upon sages, by serving those devotees completely free from all vice, great service is done. By such service, one gains affinity for hearing the messages of Vasudev. Shrandvatam Swakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Riyadanta Stoya Badrani Vidunorit Vidunoti Surit Satam Shri Krishna, the personality of Godhead, who is Paramatma Supersoul in everyone's heart and the benefactor of truthful devotee, cleanses desire from till enjoyment from the heart of the devotee, who has developed the urge to hear his messages which are in themselves virtues and properly heard and chanted. Master Praya Shubhadresh Unitam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavata Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhavati Nishtiki. By regular attendance on the class in the Bhagavata and by rendering of service to the pure devotee, all that is troubles into the heart is almost completely destroyed in loving service unto the person of God at who is praised with transcendent songs established as an irrevocable fact. Etavan Sankhya Yoga Yoga Bhyam Swadharmam Parinishtaya Janmalava Parapumsam Nante Narayana Smriti, the highest perfection of human life achieved either by complete knowledge of matter and spirit, by practice of mystic powers, or by perfect discharge of occupational duties to remember the person of God at the end of life. Akama Sarva Kama Vamukshakama Udaridi Tivrena Bhakti Yogena Yajete Purushamparam, a person who has broad intelligence, whether he be full of material, all material desires, without any material desires, or desire and liberation. Must by all means worship the supreme whole, the personality of Godhead. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. We are continuing Shrimad Bhagavatam based on the teachings of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivin Swami Shiva Prabhupada, the founder Acharya of the International Society of Krishna Consciousness. Hare Krishna, and welcome again. What are they? Any feedback from last week's session that we covered? Anyone would like to share anything from last week's session that caught the attention uh, that we can recap? Please type in the chat. So we'll recap Prabhupada's uh, power statement as well. So Shavina said, Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisance and appreciation. From last week's class, what stood out for me was that the Bhagavatam has many pastimes that demonstrate that if you take shelter of Krishna, you will always be protected. Like the pastime of Gajendra, if you are in Maya's territory, then we have to be careful. Gajendra is a land animal in water. He was vulnerable to the crocodile. We must have faith and conviction in the teachings of the Bhagavatam and how much we trust the process, how much we trust Krishna without reservation will determine the result. This trust is cultivated through good, strong association. Yes, a wonderful uh, realization and uh, very important. Mm -hmm. The Bhagavatam uh, covers again and again and again and again the glory of trusting Krishna, taking shelter of Krishna. And it's a natural process. A child depends completely, fully on the protection of their parents. Whenever there is danger, where would a child run? Who will the child call? The parents, the mother, the father. It's, it's spontaneous. It's natural. You don't tell the child, you don't educate the child that when there's danger, you cry for us. No. The child, naturally, because of the upbringing, because of the cultivation, because of the love and care, the parents do not and never tell the child, 
don't worry, we protect you. Don't worry, we love you. Don't well, they say, yeah, love is important, but uh, you know, they don't say we protect you, we protect you. They're offering that love, that reciprocation is there. And whenever there's danger, the child instantly, naturally runs to the parents. That should be our situation. Unfortunately, we do not trust and we uh, have not taken shelter of Krishna completely. And therefore, uh, when there's challenges because of our reservation, because of our lack, Krishna only protects to the degree we surrender. So uh, when there's difficulty, unfortunately, we have to go through it. But I love uh, this point that uh, Krishna does not guarantee a stormless sea, but Krishna does guarantee an unsinkable ship. Krishna does not guarantee a stormless sea, but he does guarantee a un, an unsinkable ship. And that unsinkable ship is his lotus feet. It's Krishna consciousness. So we need to uh, cultivate that. Uh, very, very important. And just by associating with the Bhagavatam, the faith that the devotees like Gajendra have, so if we hear the pastime of Gajendra again and again, we hear the pastime of Dhruva Maj again and again, we hear the pastime of Prahlad Maj again and again, what happens is, it's not just about the pastime or yearning, yearning, uh, learning the pastime, but by hearing the pastime, the faith, the conviction, the trust that these devotees had in have in the Supreme Lord, that rubs on. That rubs on. That's the beauty of associating with the Bhagavatam, with the pure devotees of the Lord. Shamananda Prabhu says, Hare Krishna. Wonderful hearing about these incarnations. We're able to hear and learn about them and develop a relationship with these personalities as well. All by Prabhupada's mercy. Else, we would know nothing of them. Yes, that's also another interesting point that we develop a relationship with them. They don't just become stories. Like sometimes we may say, there's a nice story. Krishna killed this demon. No, it's not a story. <laughs> it's not a story. A uh, story means something that generally is fictitious. This is real. This is alive. This is present. This is there. So these personalities, they dare. They're real personalities. One devotee, he asked, you know, about mediums, people connecting with those that have left this world. And uh, somebody asked him whether this is real because if the spirit soul takes birth again, then how can you speak to the person? The person's gone. So I said, yes, only someone who is more Krishna conscious, more elevated in consciousness can understand whether somebody's cheating or not. But one thing we know is that if some person who's sinful dies, he's going to Yamalaka, he's going to Yamaloka, he's taking birth again. There's no way he's going to come. But we know that those who are elevated souls, like the Goswamis, all these incarnations, what the Supreme Personality of Vishnu Tattva, Supreme Personal Godhead, Vishnu Tattva category, they can appear. Mm -hmm. Dhruva Maj, Prahlad Maj, mm -hmm. They can appear. Why? Because they are transcendental. So we can develop a relationship and we can uh, experience their association. It's not going to be easy, but the possibility exists. The ball is in our court to purify our existence, to be able to access 
the higher realms of Krishna consciousness. Nonetheless, as Hare Krishna Prabhu done, uh, depend always on Krishna completely in all circumstances. Yes, that is the goal. And to achieve that ain't easy. Because deep down, our psyche, our subconscious. So here's the thing. If I had to ask every single one of you, who should we depend on in all circumstances? Get what, get, guess what the answer is going to be. Without fail, everyone is going to say Krishna. Without fail. So that's true. But that is what the conscious mind is saying. The conscious mind is saying, Krishna, 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 yes, Krishna. Subconscious mind is saying, huh? Who? Why? No. What about this? What about that? I'm used to this. So the subconscious mind has a different agenda. And you will know what the subconscious mind has in mind. Mm -hmm. Who to surrender to when the test comes. Because when the test comes, like I give the example, when you squeeze an orange, what comes out? Not juice, orange juice. What is inside? So when the test is there, when you are squeezed, what comes out? What's in the subconscious? What's deep? That's what comes out. And sometimes we will be shocked. Sometimes devotees share when they have a close encounter with death, that squeeze. And then they share, I was thinking of that. The question was far. I was thinking of this. I was thinking of that. So, uh, therefore, cultivation, hearing, purifying, association, chanting, hearing, this has to be there. So that we can come to the extent of the conscious mind, the subconscious mind, and you, the soul, completely awakened, realize hmm, that surrendering to Krishna Mam ekam sharanam braja. Only me. Krishna eka sharana. Only Krishna. That is the perfection. Mother Lash also says, it's our responsibility to act, but don't be attached to any outcome. Whatever happens must be accepted as Krishna's mercy. Yes. Again, easier said than done. This is to practice, to apply this is not easy. But at least the first step is we know this. That itself is glorious because to come to these conclusions takes billions and billions and billions of lifetimes. So to even just know these subject matters, to even know these points, these philosophical truths, this is glorious. This is inconceivable. This is Prabhupada's uh, wonderful benediction upon us that we know these things. Now, it's only a question of time separating us to achieve the desired result, to achieve that result of completely surrendering, of accepting whatever comes my way is Krishna's mercy. Why? Because I, I've surrendered to Krishna. I've accepted Krishna. So I need to trust him. And he knows best. The child trusts the father. The child trusts the parents that they will do what's best for the child. And a good parent, good parents, they definitely make sure they want the best for the children and they make arrangements for that. The parents may go starving, but they will never put the child under such circumstances. Krishna he will always do what's best for us. We may not recognize that. We may not see that at that point in time. Krishna is seeing the destination. We seeing the journey. 
So therefore, we may not know what Krishna is arranging right now. Why Krishna didn't help me in that situation? No, he did help you. He's uh, preparing and making all the arrangements for the final destination. So he will always do what's best. Thank you very much for everyone's feedback. In this 15th, chapter, 15th verse, 7th chapter, Prabhupada says, the Lord's holy name is called Shravana Mangala. This means that one receives everything auspicious simply by hearing the holy name. The trust, the dependence, What else was mentioned? Without reservation, the determination. This is all tested in relation to the holy name. When we chant the holy name, are we just chanting mechanically, just to count, just to finish the rounds? Or when we chanting, we actually experiencing, we feeling. We recognizing, we acknowledging that yes, by simply hearing, simply chanting and hearing, I am experiencing everything auspicious. Because the Bhagavad Gita is saying, Sharavana Mangala. This means that one receives everything auspicious simply by hearing the holy name. In another place in the Bhagavad his holy name is described as Punya Sharavana Kirtana. It is a pious act simply to chant and hear all about the Lord. The Lord, the Lord descends to this earth and acts like others in connection with the activities of the world just to create subject matters for hearing about him. Otherwise, the Lord has nothing to do in this world. Nor has he any obligation to do anything. He comes out of his own causeless mercy and acts as he desires. The, and the Vedas and the Puranas are full of descriptions of his different activities so that people in general may naturally be eager to hear and read something about his activities. So we are experiencing Krishna's kindness, Krishna's mercy upon us through these pastimes. Otherwise, he has absolutely nothing to do with this material world. And majority of the devotees are in the spiritual world. So if we are to use the whole idea of democracy, where you know what the what the masses say we should you know do and where the masses are, that's where we should focus. Then questioners should stay in the spiritual world because that's where the masses are. Let the minority suffer. But no, Krishna wants everyone back in the spiritual world, including the minority, us. So therefore he comes and performs all these pastimes to attract us, to give us an opportunity to hear about him. Then uh, Mother Hemavati Radhika last week asked about mm, these three deities, mm, Sri Radha Madan Mohan, Sri Radha Govinda, and Sri Radha Gopinath. And in relation to uh, the three aspects of the Vedic knowledge categorized into Sabanda, our relationship, Abhideya, the process of devotional service, and Prayoj and ultimate goal. So uh, in the song, uh, Jai Radha, Jai Radha, Jai Krishna, Jai Vrindavan, Shi Govinda, Gopinath, Madana Mohan. So these three deities are glorified. Uh, these three deities are uh, the main deities of the Gaudiya Vaishnav line. Why? Uh, because Radha, Radha Madan Mohan, this, preside, this deity represents mm, Sambandha, so deity of Sambandha, our relationship with Krishna. Then uh, Sri Radha Govinda Dev is the deity for Abhideya. So generally, uh, the Vaishnavas pray to these deities for perfecting mm, Sambandha to Radha, Radha Madan Mohan to Radha Govinda for Abhideya and Radha Gopinath Prayojan Deity of Prayojan ultimate goal, love of Krishna Sri Radha, Radha Madan Mohan 
is also the worshipful deity of Sanatan Goswami. So uh, Sanatan Goswami is also the Acharya for Sambandha. Then the deity Sri Radha Govinda is the worshipful deity of Rupa Goswami. Rupa Goswami gave us uh, nectar devotion, all the aspects of devotional service. Now, Radha Gopinath, uh, that is the presiding deity of Madhu, of, uh, Madhu Pandit and not Raghunath Das Goswami. Uh, Raghunath Das Goswami is the Prayojana Acharya and his worshipful deity is Radha Giridari. So at least the first two deities uh, they align with uh, the same Acharya. So the deity of Sri Radha Madan Mohan is the deity of Sambandha and the worship uh, Sanat Goswami is also the Acharya for Sambandha and the worshipful deity of Sanat Goswami is Radha Madan Mohan and the relation to Radha Govinda uh, is a deity for Abhideya. Mm -hmm. so Rupa Goswami is worshipful deities and Rupa Goswami is also the Acharya for Abhideya. Radha Gopinath is the deity of Madhu Pandit and the Prayojan Acharya is Raghunath Das Goswami. So today we're going to cover 26 to 35 various activities of Lord Krishna. Text 26. Bhume sureta ravaruta vimarditayam klesha vivaya kalaya sita krishna kesha jata karishya tijananu palaksha marga karma ni chatma mahimo mahimo pani banda nani. When the world is overburdened by the fighting strength of kings, who have no faith in God, the Lord, just to diminish the distress of the world, descends with his plenary portions. Portion. The Lord comes in his original form with blue, beautiful black hair and just to expand his transcendental glories, he acts extraordinarily. No one can properly estimate how great he is. So, when there is a burden, Krishna comes. And here the description is given. The Lord comes in his original form with beautiful black hair. The description of Krishna's hair. Scripture gives many, many descriptions of the personality of Godhead. He's a person. And if he's a person, he should be able, we should be able to describe him. Yes, and we have resemblance, we have some idea of hair. Krishna's hair is not like our hair. His hair is spiritual. But uh, we have some understanding, some resemblance is there. The more we become Krishna conscious, the more these descriptions will be revealed. This verse is especially describing the appearance of Lord Krishna and his intimate expansion, Lord Baladev. Both Lord Krishna and Lord Baladev are one supreme personality of Godhead. Now, just in that statement is a contradiction. And many people will become bewildered. Hold on. Both Lord Krishna and Lord Baladev are one supreme personality of Godhead. Like, really? How many gods you got now? Is there one God or are there many gods? And why? It's again because they are projecting their material mind in terms of understanding the spiritual environment. 
So instead of saying, no, this cannot be possible, which is generally how people think, because everybody you know, thinks what they perceiving and what they think is absolute. So if it doesn't you know, match their consciousness, their brain waves, their mental frame, nope, cannot be. Whereas a devotee, one who has faith, this is an interesting point. Oh, really? Both Lord Krishna and Lord Baladev are one supreme personality. Oh, that's wonderful. So we accept that statement, cent per cent. And we don't try to necessarily try to decode it or try to completely understand it because we may not understand it completely. If the Bhagavatam and Prabhupada is saying it, yes, Lord Krishna and Lord Baladeva are one supreme personality of Godhead. And how is that possible? Well, Prabhupada says the Lord is omnipotent and he expands himself in innumerable forms and energies. And the whole unit is known as the one supreme Brahman. Such expansions of the Lord are divided into two divisions, namely personal and differential. The personal expansions are called the Vishnu Tattvas. And the differential expansions are called the Jiva Tattvas. And in such expansional activities, Lord Baladev is the first personal expansion of Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So as soon as you read the first statement that both Lord Krishna and Lord Baladev are one Supreme Personality of Godhead, and you stop there and you allow, no, no, I, I, that doesn't make sense. Then you stop yourself from understanding the absolute truth. And Prabhupada elaborates that how can Krishna achieve this? Well, very simple. He is omnipotent. He has all powers. He can do anything. He can expand himself in innumerable forms and energies. He's not limited. We do not have omnipotency. We do not have all power. So therefore, we cannot. And because we cannot, we limit it. And because of our limited frame, limited mindset, limited potency, we cannot superimpose that on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So when we understand this, when we accept this, then, oh, wonderful. And this is wonderful. Why? Because if I'm in danger, and Krishna is in Goloka Vrindavan, he's also in my heart, he's also in between every atom is all pervasive which means he can appear at any point in time without any difficulty it's not like you in danger now and you need Krishna's help and Krishna can't come and afterwards you know you ask Krishna Krishna why didn't you come it was so difficult I was busy you know, like the, the circumstance couldn't know Krishna is omnipotent he can appear at any moment any time He's, there's no restrictions that's the supreme personality of God that we are worshipping and surrendering to. In the Vishnu Puran, as well as the Mahabharata, both Krishna and Baladev are mentioned as having beautiful black hair. Even in their advanced age, the Lord is called Anu Palakshya Marga. Or, in still more technical Vedic terms, Avan Manasa Gochara. One who is never to be seen or realized by the limited sense perception of people in general. That means you cannot see Krishna with his eyes. What does that imply? That you may be in danger. Krishna is right there to help you. And you will not be able to recognize or even see him. And then on top of that, you may still say, well, just see, Krishna didn't come. <laughs> but Krishna, he was right there. He just that you didn't see him. Why? Because these eyes, they don't have the power to see Krishna. Yes, Krishna can benedict you so that you can see him. But we have to understand 
uh, because generally, you know, our, our idea is I want to see God. But hold on. It's not a question about I want to see God. It's a question of do you have eyes to see God? So before you say I want to see God, become fit with the proper eyes, then the question of I want to see God will not come. Why? Because when you get the proper eyes, the eyes that are tainted with pure love, then you automatically will see God. It's not a question of, can I see God? In the Bhagavad Gita 7.25, it is said by the Lord, Naham prakash, prakasha sarvasya yogamaya samavrita. In other words, he reserves the right of not being exposed to anyone and everyone. Only the bona fide devotee can know him by his specific symptoms. And out of many, many such symptoms, one symptom is mentioned here in this verse, that the Lord is Sita Krishna Kesha, or one who is observed always with beautiful black hair. Sita Krishna Kesha. Kesha means hair. Sita uh, Krishna means black. Sita. Hmm? So Krishna has beautiful. Sita means beautiful in this case. So Sita, Krishna, Kesha. Beautiful black hair. So we can remember Sita, Mother Sita Devi. But here it's not with an A, it's uh, not A with a stroke. It's low, Sita. So Sita, Krishna and Kesha. Both Lord Krishna and Lord Baladev have such hair on their heads. And thus, even in advanced age, they appear like young boys, 16 years old. This is the particular symptom of the, of the personality of Godhead. In the Brahma Samhita, it is stated that although he is the oldest personality amongst all living entities, he always looks like a new, youthful boy. That is the characteristic of a spiritual body. The material body is symptomized by birth, death, old age, and diseases. But the spiritual body is conspicuous by the absence of those symptoms. Living entities who reside in the Vaikuntha Lokas in the eternal living, internal life and bliss have the same type of spiritual body without being affected by any signs of old age. So the older we become, the more difficult it becomes to live, survive in this world. Old age is not the best. But it can be a very good impetus because everyone is getting older. Whether you're one year old, 10 year old, 20, 50, 80. Every single person is getting old at every single moment. So when you remember that I'm getting old, then that should become an impetus to go back home. Why? Because in the spiritual world, there is no old age. Nobody gets old in the spiritual world. That's why old age is not, doesn't resonate. The frequency of old age does not resonate with us. Because nobody gets old in the spiritual world. And that's wonderful. Wonderful reason to become Krishna conscious so that we can regain our original spiritual body that does not get old. It's your rightful inheritance. It's your rightful claim. It's not like you, it's... Uh, why you, you know, why you want to go back home? Well, because... It's your home. Why you want to get your spiritual body? Because it's your body. Right now you've taken uh, somebody else's body or an illusory body or a temporary body. A body that is completely foreign to your nature. And you are thinking it's you. The greatest misconception ever to think I'm this body. 
And because of that greatest disease, greatest misconception, we suffer. And unfortunately, it's not a click of a switch. Just like a computer program. If a computer program is programmed to do something, say, for example, like a virus, you can delete that virus, click of a button, and the virus is gone. If the computer is malfunctioning, you can switch off the computer. The computer stops malfunction, mal malfunctioning, right? So it's press of a button, and apparently the problem seems to be solved. So this problem that we currently have is not a click of a switch. There's a condition that has been there. And unfortunately, to uncondition ourselves, it requires time. And therefore, Utsa uh, Nishchara Dariat. We need enthusiasm, but at the same time, we need patience with confidence. So we need to practice Krishna consciousness enthusiastically with confidence, but we have to have patience because it's not an overnight journey. I understand I'm a spirit soul. I go take rest in the evening. I get up in the morning. I'm self-realized. Hurry, <laughs> No, It's not going to be like that. <laughs> it, it, it would have been wonderful if it was like that. Uh, but it's not going to be like that. Why? Well, Krishna, I mean, Krishna could have done that, right? And have some special room. Anyone that comes and sleep in a room, uh, they go, they sleep. Uh, they know there's, there's spiritual beings. And they go with that intention. They sleep in that room. When they get up in the morning, they self-realize. Haribo. But if that was the case, then there is no love. Then it's forced. So how do we know that you love Krishna? You, we know that you love Krishna because you in, con, you've continue enthusiastically with confidence and patience to serve Krishna even amidst all the complexity, the difficulty, the challenge, the unwanted experiences of this world. You're not giving up Krishna. Even amidst the difficulties. That is the sign that you're developing a relation with Krishna. You're loving Krishna. You're accepting Krishna. You're acknowledging Krishna. Because otherwise, why would be here? Why would I want to waste my time on Saturday? <laughs> why would you want to waste your time on Saturday? Let's go have a party. Nope. There may be 101 places to be right now. But you have all made a decision to hear and associate with the Bhagavatam. Why? Do you think Krishna is not acknowledging that? Do you think the Bhagavatam is not acknowledging that? Because Krishna and the Bhagavatam are one and different. So Krishna is acknowledging. They're noticing. Even though Krishna and Bhagavatam are one, we still say day. <laughs> because Prabhupada is making the point they can expand. Krishna is expanded as the Bhagavatam, non-different. So yes, he's the Bhagavatam and he's also the deity and he's also uh, the holy name. This is the inconceivable nature of Krishna. So yes, Krishna recognizes that you are spending your time in this way. He's, and he will reciprocate. Because you are offering uh, your time, you are offering uh, your services, and that's building the relationship. That's building the relationship. The more we solidify the relationship, uh, we become more and more purified. And as we become purified, then the reality of the spiritual world begins to be revealed. Revelation begins. What is that revelation? 
we experience the material world with old age and all its complexities and difficulties. As we practice spiritual life, slowly but surely, it's going to be very, very gradual and also depending on our surrender. Robert said you can surrender in one second. Why so many lifetimes? One second. Yes, it can take one second, but I'm so deeply rooted uh, in my own uh, maya that it will take some time. No problem. Even if it takes some time, slowly the revelation of the spiritual world begins to open. And one of the revelation is you have a spiritual body. Your form is spiritual and you don't get old. It is described in the Bhagavatam 6 chapter, Canto 6, that the party of Vishnu Dutas who came to deliver a Jamil from the clutches of the party of Yamadutas appeared like youthful boys. Corroborating the description in this verse, it is ascertained thus that the spiritual bodies in Vaikuta Lokas, either of the Lord or of the other inhabitants, are completely distinct from the material bodies of this world. In fact, when the Yamadutas, when they saw Vishnu Dutas, they were like, wow, who's these people? Hey, it's like, hey, this, where are they so beautiful? Where did they come from? We didn't see so beautiful people. Who are they? So yes, they're very beautiful. We all have beautiful bodies in the spiritual world. It's interesting. Uh, Prabhupada in the Krishna book says that in Goloka Vrindavan, it goes through also in the Vaikuntha, but definitely in Goloka, in Goloka Vrindavan, everyone is so beautiful, exquisitely beautiful, beyond imagination. Everyone is beautiful. Handsome and beautiful. Beyond compare. But the most beautiful thing is that even though everyone is so beautiful in the spiritual world, everyone's consciousness, everyone's mind, everyone's senses is only thirsty for Krishna. That's the spiritual world. They don't get distracted to exploit each other. They are only interested in the beautiful son of Mother Yashoda. That's the spiritual world. Therefore, when the Lord descends from the world to this world, he descends in his spiritual body of Atma Maya or internal potency without any touch of the Bhairanga Maya or external material energy. The allegation that the impersonal Brahman appears in this material world by accepting material body is quite absurd. Therefore, the Lord, when he comes here, has not a material body but a spiritual body. The impersonal Brahma Jyoti is only the glaring effulgence of the body of the Lord and there is no difference in quality between the body of the Lord and the impersonal ray of the Lord called Brahma Jyoti. It is chit, it is spiritual. Everything about the Lord is spiritual. Now the question is why the Lord who is omnipotent, comes here to diminish the burden created upon the world by the unscrupulous King Yoda? Good question. What's his business? If he's got omnipotent, if he's got all power, well, then one of his powers is he can just think, and by him thinking, the unscrupulous kings can get a heart attack, and they can die. Why does he have to come descend in this world, apparently take birth, grow up, go through all the motions? He can kill them from the spiritual world, just send his Surasan Chakra. He did, he did that for Durvasa Muni, who offended Maha Jambrish. The Surasan Chakra came from the spiritual world. So, he doesn't need to descend. He can just kill them. So it's a good question. 
Prabhupada says, certainly the Lord does not need to come here personally for such purposes. But he actually descends to exhibit his transcendental activities in order to encourage his pure devotees who want to enjoy life by chanting the glories of the Lord. In the Bhagavad Gita 9, 13, 14, it is stated that the Mahatmas, the great devotees of the Lord, take pleasure in chanting the activities of the Lord. All Vedic literatures are meant for turning one's attention towards the Lord and his transcendental activities. Thus, the activities of the Lord in his dealings with worldly people create a subject matter for discussion by his pure devotees. So why Krishna comes to this world? Simply uh, to encourage the pure devotees. To give us subject matter to speak about. Every Saturday. Every day. Every moment. So when we come together, there should be no prajalpa. There should be no gramya kata. There should be no village talk. Why? Because village talk... Hmm. So, if we had to now connect the previous discussions that we had from Prabhupada's purports, village talk would be foul matter entering into the year. Village talk would be uh, the subject matter of a crows. Village talk would be garbage. Uh, village talk uh, would be that which contaminates our consciousness. So we're not interested in that subject matter. We are interested in hearing about the glories of Krishna. And when we develop a taste for hearing the glories of Krishna, when we talk about the subject matters related to Krishna, we are acknowledging, just that fact is acknowledging Krishna's kindness. We are grateful to Krishna for providing the subject matter. This is why he came down. Twenty-seven. Toke na jiva haranam yad ulukhikayas train ma shikasyat. Chapada shakato pravritta yad ringatam taragatena divis prishor va unmulam unmulanam twitter twitteratar junayorna bavyam. There is no doubt about Lord Krishna's being the Supreme Lord. Otherwise, how was it possible for him to kill a giant demon like Putna when he was just on the lap of his mother? To overturn a cart with his leg when he was only three months old? To uproot a pair of Arjuna trees so high that they touched the sky when he was only crawling? All these activities are impossible for anyone other than the Lord himself. So La Brahma is still sharing these descriptions of the Supreme Personality of Godhead to Narad Muni. And here we see uh, Lord Brahma uh, very clearly describing, yes, this is why Krishna is a Supreme Personality of Godhead. And Prabhupada says, yes, Krishna doesn't need to go and practice weightlifting to pick up Govardhan Hill. No, he's the Supreme Lord. When he's a baby, he's a Supreme Lord. Uh, when he's a youth, a coward boy is a Supreme Lord. When he's a king, as Dwarkadish is a Supreme Lord. Krishna is a Supreme Lord eternally. It's not like he becomes the Supreme Lord. One cannot manufacture a God by one's mental speculation or by numerical votes as has become the practice for the less intelligent class of men. God is God eternally. 
and an ordinary living entity is eternally a part and parcel of God. So, Krishna is Krishna eternally. You are a part of Krishna eternally. There is no question of anyone becoming God because God is always God. And there is no question of someone a part becoming the whole. The part is always the part and the whole is always the whole. Therefore, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna explains Bhagavad Gita, uh, Krishna explains Arjuna. Uh, Never was a time when you did not exist, nor me, nor all these kings, Arjuna. Nor in the future shall any of us cease to be. So, I was Krishna in the past, and I'm Krishna now, and I will be Krishna in the future. You, Arjuna, you are Arjuna in the past, you are Arjuna now, and you'll be Arjuna in the future. Part and parcel of me. These kings are separated parts of me. They are now separated parts of me and they will be separated parts in the future. It's not we become one, we merge and become whole. No. God is one without a second. And the ordinary living entities are many without number. All such living entities are maintained by God himself. That is the verdict of the Vedic literatures. When Krishna was on the lap of his mother, the demon Putna appeared before his mother and prayed to nurture the child on, in her lap. Mother Shoda agreed and the child was transferred onto the lap of Putna, who was in the garb of a respect, respectable lady. Putna wanted to kill the child by smearing poison on the little nipple of her breast. But when everything was complete, the Lord sucked her breast along with her very air of life and the demon's gigantic body set to be as long as six miles fell down. So Krishna as a small baby killed Putna. But Lord Krishna did not need to expand himself to the length of the she-demon Putna. Although he was quite competent to expand himself more than six miles long, in his Vamana incarnation, he posed himself as a dwarf Brahmana. But when he took possession of his land promised by Balimaj, he expanded his footsteps to the top of the universe, extending over thousands and millions of miles. So it was not very difficult for Krishna to perform a miracle by extending his body bodily features. But he had no desire to do it because of his deep filial love for his mother, Yashoda. If Yashoda had seen Krishna in her lap extending six miles to cope with the she demon Putna, then the natural familial love of Yashoda would have been hurt because in that way Yashoda would have come to know that her son, her so-called son, Krishna, was God himself. And with the knowledge of Godhood of Krishna, Yashoda Mai would have lost the temper of her love for Krishna as a natural mother. But as far as Lord Krishna is concerned, he is God always. Either as a child on the lap of his mother or as the cover of the universe, Vamanadev. So Krishna is also greedy for his mother's love. Krishna wants to relish all the relationships that exist. And therefore, in parental love, Krishna does. Uh, Krishna tries to maintain. There are instances where Mother Shoda uh, recognizes that this must be God. When when Mother Shoda looked into the mouth of Krishna, she saw. All the universes, she saw herself, she saw Krishna, she recognized, oh, this is this seems like God, and then she fainted. And Krishna did not want to lose that relationship with Mother Ishoda. So therefore, Krishna in Vrindavan, you'll see, he never uses any weapons to kill the demons. In Vrindavan, 
Krishna just kicks them, slaps them, sucks their life out, swallows the fire. He just he doesn't use any weapon to kill, to maintain the intimacy. Outside Dwarka, Krishna uses Sudarshan Chakra, Krishna uses weapons because there there is awe and reverence. But in Vrindavan, Krishna is just a little coward boy. He does not require to become God by undergoing severe penances. Although some men think of becoming, of becoming God in that way. By undergoing severe austerities and penances, one cannot become one or equal with God. But one can attain most of the godly qualities. So yes, you can get close, but you cannot become God. A living being can attain godly qualities to a large extent, but he cannot become God. Whereas Krishna, without undergoing any type of penance, is God always. Either in the lap of his mother, or growing up, or at any stage of growth. So at the age of only three months, he killed the Sakatasura, who had rem <clears throat> remained hidden behind a cart in the house of Shodamai. And when he was crawling and was dis disturbing his mother from doing household affairs, the mother tied, tied him to a grinding pestle. But the naughty child dragged the pestle up to a pair of very high Arjuna trees in the yard of Yashodamai. And when the pestle was stuck between the pairs of trees, they fell down with a horrible sound. When Yashoda Mai came to see the happenings, she thought that a child had been saved from the falling trees by the mercy of the Lord, without knowing that the Lord himself, crawling in a yard, had wrecked the havoc. So that is the way of the reciprocation of loving affairs between the Lord and his devotees. Shodamai wanted to have the Lord as a child and the Lord played exactly like a child in her lap. But at the same time, he played the part of the Almighty Lord whenever it was required. The beauty of such pastimes was that the Lord fulfilled everyone's desire. In the case of the felling of the giant, Gigantic Arjuna trees, the Lord's mission was to deliver the two sons of Kuvera, who were condemned to become trees by the curse of Narad, as well as to play like a crawling child in the yard of Yashoda, who took transcendental pleasure in seeing such activities of the Lord in the very yard of her home. The Lord in any condition is the Lord of the universe, and he can act as such in any form, gigantic or small, as he likes. So Krishna, he's able to fulfill all the desires of the pure devotees. He can expand unlimitedly due to all these potencies and he's able to reciprocate and fulfill the desires of his pure devotees. 28. Yadvai vraja vraja posan vishatoya pitan palams Tva jiva yad anugraha drish tivrishya tachchuda yeti vishavir yavilo la jivam uchata yad uragam viharam ridin 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 yam ridadin yam yam then also, when the coward boys and the animals drank the poisoned water of the river Yamuna, and after the Lord in his childhood revived them by his merciful glance, just to purify the water of the river Yamuna, he jumped into it as if playing and chastised the, Kali, the venomous Kalya snake, which was lurking there, its tongue emitting waves of poison. Who can perform such a Herculean task but the Supreme Lord?
tatkarma divyam ivayan nishi nishyanam da vagnina suchiva ne parida yamane unest yati vrajam atto vasitan tantakalam netre pida netre pidapya sabalo nidigam yavirya on the very night of the day of the chastisement of the Kalya snake, when the inhabitants of Rajabhumi were sleeping carefully, there was a forest fire ablaze due to dry leaves, and it appeared that all the inhabitants were sure to meet their death. But the Lord, along with Balaram, saved them simply by closing his eyes. Such are the superhuman activities of the Lord. Although in this verse, the Lord's activities have been described as superhuman. It should be noted that the Lord's activities are always superhuman. And that, dis that, and that distinguishes him from the ordinary living being. Uprooting a gigantic banyan or juna trees and extinguishing a blazing forest fire simply by closing one's eyes are certainly impossible for any kind of human endeavor. But not only are these activities amazing to hear, but in fact, all other activities of the Lord, whatever he may do, are all superhuman, as confirmed in Bhagavad Gita 4.9. Whoever knows the superhuman activities of the Lord due to their very transcendental nature become eligible to enter the kingdom of Krishna. And as such, after quitting his present material body, the know of the transcendental activities of the Lord goes back home, back to Godhead. One knows the transcendental activities of the Lord in truth. What does it mean in truth? We know Krishna's position. We recognize Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He's no ordinary person. He's the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And he's performing uh, these amazing pastimes as his mercy to allow us to have something to speak about, to associate with, to purify. And when we recognize Krishna's activities in this way, then uh, we do not take birth again in this material world. So forgetting Krishna means forgetting Krishna's pastimes. Forgetting Krishna means not recognizing Krishna's pastimes. Forgetting Krishna means not recognizing Krishna, means not recognizing his pastimes. So when one dies in forgetfulness of Krishna, one comes back to this world. But when one dies, acknowledging, accepting, and realizing the pastimes of Krishna, as Prabhupada is revealing, this death, it's not an ordinary death. Prabhupada says, in one lecture, Prabhupada is saying that, yes, people are dying. And it's not that the devotee that doesn't die. But what is the devotee's death? A devotee's death means closing your eyes, opening your eyes, and you're seeing Krishna in Goloka Vrindavan. That is a devotee's death. Why? Because of this fact. Because he's recognizing, he's accepting, he's acknowledging, he's realizing, he's understanding that yes, this Krishna's transcendental activities where somebody who's atheistic, somebody who is impersonal, somebody who is trying to become God, somebody who is not interested in Krishna, when they hear about these pastimes, when they see Krishna, their heart is filled with envy, not love. When they see Krishna 
even though it's purifying them, but the poison in their heart is boiling. Whereas when devotees of the Lord see Krishna, hear about Krishna's pastimes, then in their heart, and their affection, attraction, love is bubbling, is boiling, is increasing. And therefore, this material world is not for them. They return back to the spiritual world. Text study. Grini tayad yad upabandanam upabandam amushyamata sulbam sutasya natutatad amushyamati yaj yaj jrim batoya batosya vadena buva nani gopi Samviksha Santikamana Pratibodita Sit. When the coward woman Krishna's foster mother Yashoda was trying to tie the hands of her son with ropes, he found the rope to be all she found the rope to be always insufficient in length. And when she finally gave up, Lord Krishna by and by opened his mouth, where in the mother found all the universes situated. Seeing this, she was doubtful in her mind and she was convinced in a different manner of the mystic nature of a son. One day, Lord Krishna, as a naughty child, disturbed his mother, mother's shoulder and she began to tie up the child with ropes just to punish him. But no matter how much rope she used, she found it always insufficient. And thus she came fatigued. But in the meantime, the Lord opened his mouth and the affectionate mother saw within the mouth of a son all the universe situated there together. The mother was astonished. But out of a deep affection for Krishna, she thought that the almighty God at Narayan had kindly looked after her son just to protect him from all the continuous calamities happening to him. Because of a deep affection for Krishna, she could never think of her son, her very son as Narayan, the personality of God at himself. That is the action of Yoga Maya, the internal potency of the Supreme Lord, which acts to perfect all the pastimes of the Lord with his different types of devotees. Who could play such wonders without being God? So the devotee he sees Krishna's supremacy in every pastime. Because only God can do this. Only Krishna is able to maintain a relationship with Mother Shoda and at the same time never lose his Godhood. Only God can do this. And Mother Shoda, no matter what Krishna does mystic, in a mystical way, she always thinks that her Worshipful deity Narayan has protected Krishna. Thank you, Narayan, for protecting Krishna. Every morning she's chanting mantras to protect Krishna. Because for her, Krishna is my darling son. I have to protect him. I have to raise him nicely. When the gopis would come and complain to Mother Shoda, Mother Shoda is thinking, I have to grow, I have to bring him up nicely. He's becoming a naughty boy. But she never believed that Krishna was doing anything naughty in the house of the gopis. But when he broke the yogurt pots in her own house, now, yes, looks like all the gopis' complaints were true. And he's meant to be the king, the future king. Nandamaj is the king of Rindavan. <laughs> so if, if, if our son is doing this, this is like, this is very bad for, bad education for the kid. He's growing up in the wrong way. Nope, we have to teach him a lesson. He needs to grow up as a, as he needs to follow his father's footsteps. You can't do this. So yes, from Mother Shoda's perspective, I need to educate him. From Krishna's perspective, the gopis are calling me. 
And if the gopis want me to come and eat the butter and I go, what's the problem? They're calling me. The gopis, they're churning the butter, but they're not telling anyone that they're churning the butter only for Krishna. They're not even churning the butter for their husbands. <laughs> they're, churning the husband, they're churning the butter for Krishna. Uh, each gopi is churning butter and thinking, I wish, I wish, I wish, I pray, 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 Krishna comes to my house and steal my butter. Mm -hmm. So in this way, uh, Krishna is performing all these wonderful pastimes. Is fulfilling everyone's desires at the same time. This is inconceivable. He's staying as a child. He's staying as a thief. He's staying as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. All at the same time, only God can do this. 31. Nandam chamokshyati bhavayad varunasya prasad gopan bileshu pihitan maya su nuyacha an anya pritam nishisan yanam atishramena lokan vikuntam upaneshta Upanishyati Gokulam Sma. Lord Krishna saved his foster father Nandamaj from the fear of the demigod Varuna and released the coward boys from the caves of the mountains. For they were placed there by the son of Maya. Also to the inhabitants of Vrindavan who were busy working during daytime and sleeping soundly, soundly at night because of their hard labor in the day, Lord Krishna awarded Promotion to the highest planet in the spiritual sky. All these acts are transcendental and certainly prove without any doubt is Godward. Nanamaj, the foster father of Lord Krishna, went to take his bath in the river Yamuna in the dead of night, mistaking, mistakenly thinking that the night was already over. Thus, the demigod Varuna took him to the, to the Varuna planet just to have a look, just to have a look at the personality of God at Lord Krishna, who appeared there to release his father. Actually, there was no arrest of Nanamaj by Varuna because the inhabitants of Vrindavan were always engaged in thinking of Krishna, in constant meditation of the personality of God in a particular form of samadhi or trance or bhakti yoga. They had no fear of the miseries of material existence. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is confirmed that to be in association with the Supreme Personality of Godhead by full surrender is transcendental love. In transcendental love, frees one from the miseries inflicted by the laws of material nature. Here it is clearly understood, sorry, here it is clearly mentioned that the inhabitants of Vrindavan were extensively busy in the hard labor of their day's work. And due to the day's hard labor, they were engaged in sound sleep at night. So practically, they had very little time to devote to meditation or to the other paraphernalia of spiritual activities. But factually, they were engaged in the highest spiritual activities only. Everything done by them was spiritualized because everything was dovetailed in their relationship with Lord Sri Krishna. The central point of their activities was Krishna. And so such, and, and as such, the so-called activities in the material world was saturated with spiritual potency. That is the advantage of the way of bhakti yoga. Here is the key point, instruction that Prabhupada is giving. One should discharge one's duty on Lord Krishna's behalf. And all one's actions 
who will be saturated with Krishna thought, the highest pattern of trance in spiritual realization. This is what the gopis, what the residents of Vrindavan did. They were doing the household duties. Now, consider Arjuna as well. He was doing his duty as a warrior, fighting. So whether it was residents of Vrindavan, churning yogurt, doing the household duties, getting water from the Yamuna, or whether it was Arjuna actually fighting on a battlefield, they were in Samadhi. They were not, they were immune. That focus, that form of activity that they were doing because it was connected with Krishna, because as Prabhupada says, they were discharging that duty on behalf of Krishna. Arjuna was fighting on behalf of Krishna. Because Krishna told him, you fight for me. I want you to fight. So if one is able to perform one's activities, even apparent mundane activities, for the pleasure of Krishna, on behalf of Krishna, that means even it may not be direct Krishna conscious activities, secondary activities, your work, your job, raising a family, apparently doing mundane activities. But the intention behind that activity is connected to Krishna somehow or other than those activities which are saturated with the thoughts of Krishna be even behind the scene. Robert says that the highest pattern of trance in spiritual realization. That is Krishna consciousness. And with that level of, of trance, of consciousness of Krishna, you become immune to material miseries. And that means while one is living in this world, even now, with this type of consciousness, you will transcend the material world and return back to the spiritual world. So everything done by them was spiritualized because everything was dovetailed in their relationship with Lord Sri Krishna. So dovetailing. Discharge one's duty on behalf of Krishna. Constant meditation. Thinking of Krishna. Always thinking of Krishna. They were fully surrendered in association with Krishna. Therefore, even the parent suffering, like Varuna capturing Nandamaj, Varuna going, uh, Nandamaj going through that suffering, is a parent. Looks like they're suffering, but no. Because the internal consciousness is with Krishna. Varuna wanted to see Krishna. Even Lord Vishnu wanted to see Krishna. Krishna's pastimes, Krishna's uh, pastimes in this world, as Prabhupada says, Lord Brahma is saying that Krishna is coming to this world, it's out of his compassion. But for Mahavishnu, he wants to see the beautiful form of Krishna. And it's interesting that Mahavishnu he wants to see Krishna, but he cannot come to Dwarka to see Krishna or come to Vrindavan to see Krishna. So he had to steal the Brahmana's children just so that Krishna could come with Arjuna 
too sweet to deep, the spiritual abode, beyond this material creation, to see him. Ma Vishnu wants to see the beautiful form of Krishna. But Ma Vishnu is God. Why would God want to see God? <laughs> because Ma Vishnu, uh, his form is Aishwarya. And Krishna, his form is Audarya. His form is Madhurya. His form is full of compassion, sweetness. And Ma Vishnu wants to see the sweet form of Krishna. So just see. Just think about it. If Krishna is so attractive even to Ma Vishnu, why wouldn't Krishna be attractive to us? The more we purify our senses by hearing, Krishna will become more and more attractive. It's not that Krishna's beauty Krishna's pastimes, Krishna's names, Krishna's qualities is not attractive, is not sweet. Just like it's not that the sun is not shining, not brilliant, not giving heat, not giving light. But when the clouds of a Narata are blocking when the clouds are blocking our vision and experience of the brilliance of the sun, then we cannot experience the sun. Similarly, when the clouds of anartha, unwanted desires, pass sinful impressions, when they block, block us, then we cannot experience Krishna. But the medicine What we're trying to become attracted to is itself medication. So even though right now Krishna's pastimes, Krishna's activities, Krishna's qualities, Krishna's names, Krishna's form may not be experienced in its fullness because of the clouds of Anartha, by exposing ourselves to those aspects of Krishna, the clouds of Anartas will slowly be dismantled and purified. And as that purification happens, slowly the attraction manifests. Just like when the clouds slowly dissipate, the dark clouds slowly dissipate, and the brilliance of the sun begin to manifest. 32. Goper make pratihate vraja viplava viplavaya deve bivar sati pushan kripaya ririkshu darto chi ling dridam eva sapta dinani sap Varsho Mahi Dri Mahi Driram Anag Heka Kat Reshalilam. When the coward boys of Vrindavan, under instruction of Krishna, stopped offering sacrifices, sacrifice to the heavenly king Indra, the whole tract of land known as Vraja was threatened with being washed away by constant heavy rains for seven days. Lord Krishna, out of his causeless mercy upon the inhabitants of Vraja, held up the hill known as Govardhan with only, with one hand only. Although he was only seven years old, he did this to protect the animals from the onslaught of water. Children play with an umbrella, generally known as a frog's umbrella. And Lord Krishna, when he was only seven years old, could snatch the great hill known as Govardhan Parvata at Vrindavan 
and hold it for seven days continuously with one hand just to protect the animals and inhabitants of Vrindavan from the wrath of Indra, the heavenly king, who had been denied sacrificial offerings by the inhabitants of Vrindavan. Factually, there is no need of offering sacrifices to the demigods for their services if one is engaged in the service of the Supreme Lord. Factually, there is no need of offering sacrifices to the demigods for their services if one is engaged in the service of the Supreme Lord. That payment is already done. When you serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead, you are paying off all the debts that exist. No need to separately pay off debts. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada gives the example. When you pour water on the root, you automatically nourish all the parts of the tree. So when one serves the Supreme Personality of God, then we don't need to separately do any other sacrifice. So this automatically simplifies our life. Otherwise, we have to know so many rituals and so many karma kanda rules and regulations. You have to do this and you have to do this because of this and you have to do this. Prabhupada said uh, that if, if you had to follow all the rules and regulations as prescribed in the Vedic scriptures, you'll never move out of your room in the morning. Because before you wake up, uh, you have to say certain things. You have to do certain things. When you put your feet on the ground, you have to do certain things and say certain things. When you take a step, you have to. You, you will never get to the bathroom. Because there's so many things to do just when you wake up. But when we follow the footsteps of Vrindavan, residents of Vrindavan, Simply be conscious of Krishna. Simply dedicate our life to Krishna. Simply do everything on behalf of Krishna. Simply dovetail everything for the pleasure of Krishna. Then we don't need to perform any subsidiary activities, rituals, ceremonies, sacrifices, nothing. To any living entities. Whether it's the demigods, whether it's the forefathers, whether it's my parents, whether it's the government, no one. Because it's automatically paid. Now, those that we are indebted to, they may say, why are you not paying me? Why are you not performing sacrifice? Like Indra gets upset. We don't need to bother. We don't need to worry. That's Indra's problem, not your problem. And Krishna will do the needful. Sometimes demigods, they get, because of pride, or uh, Krishna is teaching the danger of pride through the demigods as well. So Indra was a classic instrument to teach us the lesson that when we engage in devotional service, we may also become proud and puffed up. Why nobody is paying any you know, respects to me? Why is nobody offering you know, obeisance to me? Why is nobody acknowledging me? You know, don't they know me? I'm a great devotee. Well, we may become proud like that. And because of that, we may start falling down like Indra. So Indra was used to teach us this lesson. That yes, Krishna will put you in a post. Krishna will give you some service. Don't become proud. Don't become puffed up. Mm -hmm. Always understand and accept and acknowledge that we are simply instruments of Krishna. I'm simply offering service to Krishna by the mercy of Krishna, or the, on behalf of Krishna, and that's a privilege. It's not because of me that I have, I'm able to offer service. It's because of Krishna's mercies, because of the spiritual master's mercies, because of the disciplic succession's mercy that I'm able to do some service. 
whatever that service may be. So in this way, uh, I'm, <clears throat> I'm always acknowledging my shortcomings and the blessings that I have. That is the safest. As soon as you think you something, as soon as you think you are doing it, as soon as you think you are qualified, and that's when the disqualification begins. So we always need to check ourselves. Now we see Prabhupada uh, again and again showed this also. When they would say, Prabhupada, just see how you spread Krishna Kanda all over the world. Prabhupada said, no, I didn't do anything. You all helped me spread Krishna consciousness. And you all were sent uh, by my spiritual master. So I didn't do anything. So this was Prabhupada's consciousness. And he wasn't thinking, yeah, you know, you people do everything, I'll sit and relax, enjoy chapati and bread and sabji. No. Prabhupada was working hard. At the same time, uh, to a total dependence. So uh, this is the lesson that we have to cultivate in our consciousness. But the point that Prabhupada is making here, that Lord Brahma is sharing, Indra got upset, but Krishna protected the residents of Vrindavan. So again, trust Krishna. Trust his ways, trust his intelligence, trust his potency, because he is perfect. Krishna never makes a mistake. Krishna never loses control. Krishna never becomes bewildered. What should I do now? Uh, uh, uh. No, Krishna never becomes bewildered. He knows exactly what he needs to do. Krishna is always on time. Ah, forgot. No, Krishna never forgets. <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't think I can do this. Ah, I feel weak. No. So Krishna is always on time. Krishna is omnipotent. He'll never become bewildered. He will always know exactly what to do at every moment in your life. So trust Krishna. We're putting trust in so many people and so many things. Divert that trust to Krishna and leave your life in his hands. Whatever he is bringing in your life, know for sure it is for your best It's for your best interest. Yes, he can remove it. He can remove the pain. He can remove the old age. He can remove the suffering. He can remove the trauma. He can remove the aging. He can remove the distress. Krishna can do that. He's all powerful. But if he did not, it implies that there is a reason. Therefore, whatever the reason is, I may not understand at this point in time, and there is no reason to understand. My duty is to think of Krishna to dovetail my life to Krishna, to act on behalf of Krishna, to do everything for the pleasure of Krishna. That's my duty. So let me continue with that and accept whatever is coming my way by Krishna's desire and go through those events, those unwanted events events from my perspective, go through it 
but maintaining these aspects that Prabhupada is sharing with us in relation to Krishna. That is what Krishna, what Prabhupada, what the spiritual master wants to see. And if we do that, what should be the outcome in terms of my relationship with Krishna? So, for example, in this case, the residents of Vrindavan, Krishna tells Mother, Krishna tells Mother Maharaj and the residents, don't worship Indra, worship Govardhan. Okay. Why did they follow Krishna? Because exactly that. Well, this is what Krishna wants. If this is what Krishna wants, fine. Okay. They accept it. So like that, whatever comes in our life, this is what Krishna wants. How do I know this is what Krishna wants? Because Prabhupada made it very clear, if you chanting Hare Krishna, even one round, the karma that you are getting is not your karma now. It is Krishna karma. Meaning, meaning that it's your karma that's not handed down directly by the law of karma. It is your karma which is handed down by Krishna himself with his personal hands. So that karma is coming in Krishna's hands. Krishna is deciding what to do with that karma and then he's giving it to you. So it could be nothing. It could be little. It would be totally different. Because it's coming in Krishna's hands Krishna is deciding what is the best for you at this point in time with this karma that I got in my hand for you that's going to benefit you. And Krishna is giving that. Krishna will never do anything that is destructive for us, for our benefit. It's always going to be for our benefit. So when we accept the karma like that, we become blissful. So when the residents accepted, okay, Krishna wants us, let's do it. And they did it. Indra didn't like it. Well, Indra then sent his uh, smart, uh, Sambarta clouds and there was devastation. Now, the residents, when they saw this devastation, they didn't say, see, we should never have listened to Krishna. From now on, we're never going to listen to Krishna. We're never going to be Krishna conscious. No. They went to Krishna. And yes, they were complaining to Krishna. But the point is, they never forgot Krishna. They went to Krishna. So in, our same, in the same situation, we may also be experiencing our karma that came through Krishna's hands and it may be traumatic, it may be difficult, it may be not acceptable. No problem. What you should do? Go to Krishna. So whether you experience the good, bad or ugly, go to Krishna. He's there. Maybe that's what Krishna wanted. Krishna wants you to turn to him. Therefore, he's doing it. And that's wonderful. You're not crying enough. Krishna is going to do something. So whatever Krishna does in our life with our karma is for our benefit. And no matter what, go to him. If it's too painful, cry to him. Krishna, this is too painful, please. That's what Krishna wants. You can be upset. You can be angry. You can cry. You can be jolly. You can be grateful. You can even be ungrateful. <laughs> it doesn't matter as long as you turn to Krishna. And that will slowly purify you more and more. Your karma is getting purified. 
by practicing devotional service, your Prarabdha karma is getting purified. All your karma is getting purified. And because you're practicing devotional service, now you, you are not creating karma, you're creating a karma. That means there's no reaction. Eventually, at one point in your life, in the future, there will be no karma that's coming in Krishna's hands for him to give. At that point, you are now living and experiencing Krishna directly. Because there's no past, there's no baggage. So the beauty is that as a devotee, as an aspiring devotee, even now, we should be blissful. Why? Because I'm moving to a better situation. If I'm moving to a better situation, is that not good? Is that not, you know, cause for celebration? Of course. Just like a businessman, if a businessman is starts a business, so let's say he launches his business right, right now, and today he makes $100. Let's say he, gets his, he sells his first product online and he makes $100. Do you think he's going to be ecstatic and happy? Of course. He's going to be celebrating. I made my first, I made my first sale. Hey, wonderful. $100. Somebody will say $100 like you're not even a millionaire. Well, it doesn't matter. I made my first sale. That's cause of celebration. He's not going to say, oh, yeah, I only made $100. Like, what's the use of it? Like, pathetic. No. If he has the proper mindset, he's going to be ec ecstatic. He's going to be excited. He's going to be happy. So for us also, our life at this point in time is far more glorious than a minute ago. Because we are hearing and chanting the glories of Krishna. If that is the case, that itself should be a cause of celebration, a cause of jubilation, a cause of excitement. Even amidst the current turmoil around us. So by being Krishna conscious, Having trust in Krishna and accepting whatever Krishna is making for arranging for us, there, there should be no cause of depression, of disappointment, of sulkiness. We should be happy, blissful, blissfully engaged in Krishna consciousness. Krishna allowed the residents of Vrindavan to go through the trauma because it is sometimes only in a traumatic experience that when Krishna removes that trauma it heightens, it increases our attachment to him. When he picked up Govardhan Hill and got everybody under, they were so blissful. So sometimes uh, we cannot experience summer, or we not we don't uh, we don't value summer enough if we don't experience winter. So yes, we don't we want the experience of Vaikuntha. But we're not going to get the experience of Vaikuntha uh, without the qualification required. So Krishna uses our disqualification to qualify us. And therefore, the process of going through that, we should accept, acknowledge, and be blissful. Because why? The future is going to be bright. The future is always bright. 
for a devotee. But when the Supreme Lord is worshipped directly, there is no need of worshipping the demigods or offering them sacrifices as recommended in particular circumstances. Lord Krishna therefore advises, advise the inhabitants of Virajabhumi not to offer any sacrifices to the heavenly king Indra. But Indra, not knowing Lord Krishna in Virajabhumi, was angry at the inhabitants of Virajabhumi and tried to avenge the offense. But competent as the Lord was, he saved the inhabitants and animals of Virajabhumi by his personal energy and proved definitely that anyone directly engage as a devotee of the Supreme Lord need not satisfy any other demigods, however great, even to the level of Brahma or Shiva. This, thus, this incident definitely proved without a doubt that Lord Krishna is the personality of Godhead and that he was so in all circumstances. As a child on the lap of, my, of his mother, as a seven-year-old boy, and as an old man of 125 that did not look old, in none of these cases was he ever on the level of an ordinary man. And even in his advanced age, he appeared just like a 16-year-old boy. These are the particular features of the transcendental body of the Lord. So it's amazing how Lord Brahma is sharing these activities and appearances of these incarnations. He said over around 39 of them, one by one. And see how amazing Srila Prabhupada is taking these pastimes, not just giving us the pastime, not just re-iterating re 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 the pastime again, but extracting or highlighting the lessons to be learned from these pastimes, from these incarnations. And these lessons that Prabhupada is highlighting is important in molding our psyche for full surrender to Krishna, for bringing Krishna fully in our consciousness in our life. 33. Kridan vane nishish nishakara ram rasmi goryam Rason mukha kalapadayata murchita murchite na udipitas mara ruja rujam braja brihad brihad vardunam vardunam ha brihad vardunam hartu hartur harishyati shiro dana dang nugasya when the Lord was engaged in his pastimes with the rasa dance in the forest of Vrindavan, enlivening, enlivening the sexual desires of the wives of the inhabitants of Vrindavan by sweet and melodious songs, a demon of the name Sankajuda, a rich follower of the treasurer of heaven, Kuvera, kidnapped the damsels, and the Lord severed his head from his trunk. We should carefully note that the statements described herein are the statements of Brahmaji to Narad. And he was speaking to Narad of the events that would happen in future during the advent of Lord Krishna. This is happening way before Krishna is performing his, has performed his pastimes. The pastimes of the Lord are known to the experts who are able to see past, present, and future. And Brahmaji, being one of them, foretold what would happen in the future. The killing of Shankar Judah by the Lord is a more recent incident after the Rasalila and not exactly a simultaneous affair. In the previous verses, we have seen also that the Lord's engagement in the affairs of the forest fire was described along with his pastimes of punishing the Kalya snake. And similarly, the pastimes of the Rasa, Rasa dance and the killing of, Ch of Shankar Judah are also described here in the, uh, uh, the adjustment is that all these incidents, incidents would take place in the future after the time 
when it was been foretold by Brahmaji to Naraji. The demon Shankar Judah was killed by the Lord during his pastime on Holika Purnima in the month of Falguna. And the same incident is still commemorated in India by the burning of an effigy of Shankar Judah. One day prior to Holika Purnima, the day on which the festival generally known as Holi is celebrated. Generally, the future appearance and activities of the Lord or his incarnations are foretold in scripture, scriptures, and thus the pseudo-incarnations are unable to cheat persons who are in knowledge of the events as they are described in the authoritative scriptures. So bottom line is, if anyone claims to be an incarnation, we need to go back to scripture and validate. And if we cannot validate from scripture, then we do not accept. Krishna's incarnations, Krishna's activities were validated. Lord Chet Mahaprabhu's pastimes were validated. Even Kalki, who is yet to come in 427,000 years from now, his uh, life is already described. All his activities are already described. Who is going to get married to? Who his parents are? Who is going to accept his guru? What is going to learn? How he's going to travel the world? What he's going to do is all already described. Therefore, we accept him as a valid incarnation. Otherwise, we don't. 34 to 35. Yacha pralamba karadar dura keshya male bakam sayavana kapi pondra kadya anye cha salva kuja bal bal vala danta vakra sapto sha sambara vidurata rukmini mukya Yeva mrides samiti salina atta chapa kambo jamatsya kuru shrinjaya kai kayadya yastyantya darshan darshanam malambala parta bima vaj vyaja vayena harinani layam Tadiyam. All the demon, all the demonic personalities like Paralamba, Tenuka, Baka, Keshi, Arishta, Chanura, Mushtika, Kuvalya, Kuvalaya, Pida, Elephant, Kamsa, Yavana, Narakasura, and Pondraka, great marshals like Salvia, the Vidya monkey, the Balvala Tantavakra. The seven bulls, Sambara, Vidurata, and Rukmini, and Rukmi, as also great warriors like Kamboja, Matsya, Kuru, Shrinjaya, and Kekaya, would all fight vigorously, either with the Lord, either with the Lord Hari directly, or with his, or with him under his names of Baladev, Arjuna, Bhima, etc. And the demons thus been killed would attain either the impersonal Brahma Jyoti or his personal abode in the Vaikuntha planets. All manifestations in both the material and spiritual worlds are demonstrations of the different potencies of Lord Krishna. The personality of God at Baladev is his immediate experience personal expansion, and Bhima and Arjuna, etc., are his personal associates. The Lord would appear, and as he does, so whenever he appears, with all his associates and potencies. Therefore, the rebellious souls, like the demons and the demonic men mentioned by names, like Pralamba, Pralamba would be killed either by the Lord himself or by his associates. All these affairs will be clearly explained in the 10th canto. But we should know well that all of the above mentioned living entities killed would attain salvation either by being merged in the Brahmajyoti of the Lord 
or been allowed to enter into the boat of the Lord called Vaikuntas. This has already been explained by Bhishma Dev, first canto. All persons who participate in the battlefield of Kurukshetra or otherwise with the Lord or with Baladev, etc., would benefit by attaining spiritual existence according to the situation of their minds at a time of death. Those who recognized the Lord would enter by Kunta. And those who estimated the Lord as only a powerful being would attain salvation by merging into the spiritual existence of the impersonal Brahma Jyoti of the Lord. But every one of them would get release from material existence. I'm going to repeat that again. Why? Because consider who are these personalities that have been mentioned by names. What Krishna conscious activities have they done? How many rounds of the Lord are they chanting? Are they engaging in devotional service? Are they hearing the glories of the Bhagavatam? And the answer is a big no. Okay? So, if they're not doing these devotional activities, what is their destination? Those who recognize the Lord would enter Vaikuntha, and those who estimated the Lord as only a powerful being would attain salvation by merging into the spiritual existence of the impersonal Brahma Jyoti of the Lord. But every one of them would get release from material existence. Hold on. These demons who don't engage in any devotional activity, they're not chanting God's names, they're inimical to Krishna, they're not hearing the Bhagavatam, they're not engaging in devotional service, they're killed by Krishna, and then they get free from material existence. That's unfair. So it's not a question of seeing the unfairness. It's a question of inspiring those who are actually engaging devotional service. <clears throat> if the Lord is able to free those who are inimical to him as demons and they get release from material existence, which is the cause of suffering, Consider, just ponder, just think for a moment. What would somebody, what destination would somebody get if they sincerely, honestly are trying to serve and please Krishna? What to talk about actually offering activities of glorious devotional service that is pleasing Krishna. What would they get? Consider Putana. She came to kill Krishna. And yet Krishna promoted her to the spiritual world, to the highest spiritual realm, as a nurse in the spiritual world, in Goloka Vrindavan. Why? Because she just had the sentiment of wanting to offer her motherly love, her breasts, to feed Krishna. So this also should be our inspiration, our motivation to continue to render service, to deepen our relation with Krishna to increase our hearing and chanting in relation to Krishna. Because having a relationship with this beautiful personality 
is sweet, is wonderful, is glorious. And there is no comparison. Having a relationship with any other personality in the material world will always be fallible. But having a relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the best of all relationships. Prophet continues, since such is the benefit of those who played, the, who played with the Lord inimically, one can imagine what would be the position of those who devotedly serve the Lord in the transcendental relationship with Him. Kvantarach Shimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Shila Prabhupada ki jai, Nitai Gopanamande, Hari Hari Bo. Are there any questions or comments anyone has? Any feedback? Any corrections? Please type in the chat. Mother Les says they need they need to show the Virat Rupa if they are the Lord. Yes. If anyone claims to be God, Prabhupada said, tell them, show me your Virat Rupa, show me your universal form. Then they're going to say, oh, you need eyes, you cannot see. You need divine eyes to see me, see my Virat Rupa. See, that's an excuse. And what Prabhupada says, Prabhupada says, well, in Arjuna also couldn't see Krishna's Virat form. But Krishna gave him divine eyes to see. So since you God, you give me divine eyes so I can see. So, yes. Uh, Prabhupada was expert to guide us in every way. Mother Sangeeta says, Hare Krishna Prabhu, today's class feel like blessing from Krish Lord Krishna's hand. Thank you so much. It was lovely to hear the past times of the Lord and motivation to always go to Lord Krishna. Yes. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada, if that's, that is why Prabhupada wanted us to study his books, read his books every single day. Why? Because Prabhupada in his Bhaktivedanta purports, he amazingly shares Krishna's glories. He motivates us in devotional service. He warns us about Maya. All through his purports. So if we simply associate, simply study, simply read Prabhupada's books, we will be experiencing encouragement, protection, inspiration, Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada said, even I read these books. Why? Because these books are coming from Krishna. They are Krishna himself coming in our lives. Shamananda Prabhu says, Hare Krishna Prabhu, thank you. And Madhuja Vashar and Srimad Bhagavad Nectar with us again. Really wonderful to hear the con Continued narration of Krishna's pastimes by Lord Brahma to Narad Muni. Really sweet and reminding us of the different activities performed by the Lord and lessons to take away as well as Prabhupada's purports. Thank you very much for your feedback. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is really what our lives should be. Prabhupada in one purport says, the perfection of the relationship between the spiritual master and disciple is when the spiritual master is able to share the pastimes of Krishna directly with the disciple. That is the perfection. So Prabhupada is directly sharing Krishna consciousness with us. Just to engage in this activity of hearing and chanting, this is perfection. If we continue like this, Maya cannot touch it. Now, yes, we would love to continue like this, but we have duties. We have activities. Now, I have to continue those activities, but the beauty is that while we're continuing those activities, Prabhupada has highlighted how we should perform those duties. Because those duties, that the secondary duties that we have to perform, they are not eternal. Our eternal life is with Krishna in his pastimes. 
in his service, in the service of Srimati Radhavani, following the footsteps of our Acharyas. So that is our real life. So before, or for us to get that fully bloom, fully blossom, to get to that destination, we still have to do our duty. No problem. So we do our duty as per Prabhupada's in guidance and instruction. Dovetail. Think on behalf of. Meditate. Please, Krishna. When we do this, uh, then uh, slowly uh, we will be moving to our destination where we can one day fully render uh, service to Krishna without any secondary distraction. So until that time, uh, let us blissfully continue. Jagannath Priya says, without Krishna, I am nothing. Uh, yes, without Srila Prabhupada, we are nothing. Without our spiritual master, we are nothing. Uh, without the devotees, we are nothing. Without the disciplic succession, we are nothing. Without the holy name, we are nothing. Our existence has value only because of these personalities. They give life and meaning to our existence. Mother Lesh says, Hare Krishna Prabhu, thank you for the wonderful Krishna Kata. Thank you very much, Mother Lesh. Jayatira says, Hare Krishna, it was simply amazing to hear about Krishna. Thank you. Question, how does a devotee know when all his karma is complete and he is living with Krishna. So, it's easy to know that, Jai Tirtha Prabhu, when you look, when you wake up in the morning and you look in the mirror, when you do not see the body reflected, but you see yourself. You should know no karma. As long as there is karma, it means there's the body. You may have one desire left in your karmic stock means you need a body to burn that one ray of karma. And you will get a body according to that one desire or that one ray of desire that you need to burn out. So you get a body. So body means karma. As long as you have a body, material body means karma. As soon as that one ray, so let's say that example of that one ray. So in your past life, you had that one ray, just one desire left, nothing else. Your whole stock is finished. Bhagavatam says that even if you don't perform any karma right now, you got mountains and mountains of karma that you need to burn. So let's say you only got one ray of karma. You take birth, you get a body, and right in the womb, you die. Why? Because that was the desire and got burnt and now it's finished. No desire. Now you... Krishna conscious, you go back home. So that's when you will know. So it's not, it's not like you know, you think, right? Ah, let me think, no karma. I feel good. No, 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 no. There's no hallucination, there's no imposition on the mind, there's no thinking you have to do. No, 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 no. Got nothing to do with some mystical experience. No. You will see yourself, you will know exactly who you are. You'll know exactly who you what your identity is. You will be able to see Krishna face to face. Uh, it's just like, how do you know that you are awake and not dreaming? You're awake and then you now I'm awake and now you can interact and you can see exactly the same. You will awake from this dream into your spiritual reality. And you'll clearly know the distinction without doubt. And you will not have a material body at all. You will be fully awakened, fully conscious in your spiritual identity in relation to Krishna. So that's how you will know. 
thank you everyone for your time and association. And next week we will continue with uh, this wonderful discussion, wonderful nectar between Lord Brahma and uh, Narad Muni. Mother Les says, Hare Krishna Prabhu, is that, is that known as miscarriage? What does that mean from the mother's perspective? So karma is complicated. I just gave an example to illustrate uh, in terms of the one desire. But you have no idea why the child dies. So remember, the child may, according to past karma, the child may just have uh, karmic uh, activities to burn in relation to that family. And the family may also have to go through some karmic ex experiences with that soul. So karma of child, karma of the parents, karma of everybody comes together, delivers the karma, and next life you move on. So it doesn't mean that that child necessarily is a pure devotee, but it means that according to karma, that's what the experience needs to be, and then life goes on. So yes, in essence, that is you know technically what we call miscarriage. Uh, and uh, ultimately, again, whatever karma we experience, from a perspective of a devotee, we should go through uh, how we've gone, or how we shared in the in the in the in the session. Uh, for non-devotees, yes, they're going to see it as unfortunate suffering, etc. Mm -hmm. So, from our perspective, Krishna, you know, wanted this. We had to go through it for whatever reason. I may not understand the reason. It's painful. I pray to Krishna. I can cry to Krishna. No problem. But whatever is coming to you is coming through Krishna's hands. That we need to accept. And if we accept it with that spirit, then we will always overcome the challenge and become stronger in Krishna consciousness. And that is what matters ultimately. Are we, are we growing in our Krishna consciousness? Pafana says, I love the conception of giving all miseries or happiness to Krishna, taking it back to him. Yes, he's our father. It, 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 consider, you know, in a family, right? Let's say, take an example of a child. The child goes to school. The child gets bullied. What the child, when the child comes home, what is the child going to do? He's going to run to his parents. He's going to say, mommy, mommy, they were bullying me. Father, father, they were bullying me in school. Now, a good, good parents, they won't say, yeah, you deserve it. You're a rascal. No. They can say, don't worry. Huh? We'll come to school and we'll speak to the teachers. They're going to come. They're going to get, they're going to get involved. They're going to help the child. So when the child comes home, because he's surrendered to his parents, he's depending on his parents, he reveals his problems to his parents. No, nowhere in scripture is it says, do not reveal your problems to Krishna. <laughs> it doesn't say that. You can you should Prabhupada says Krishna is our best friend. If Krishna is your friend, what do you tell? What do you do? What do you do with friends? You reveal your mind to your friend. You reveal your mind and heart to your best friend. So we should reveal our mind and heart to our friend, Krishna. Go to Shishinitai, go hurry and reveal your mind. Go to Prabhupada, reveal your mind. Go to the deities and reveal your mind. Go to Krishna, reveal your mind. Go to the Bhagavatam and reveal your mind. Go to the Holy Name and reveal your mind. Tell them, this is the, my problem. And yes, you know, I, this is my problem because I can't see like this, but you know, this is the situation I'm in and I don't know why you're putting me in the situation and it's like traumatic and it's like difficult and I don't know what's your plan. Uh, yeah, you speak to Krishna. You reveal me. That's, that's Krishna consciousness. You are developing a relationship with Krishna. And however Krishna wants to reciprocate, however Krishna wants to reveal, however Krishna wants to inspire, however Krishna wants to direct, you accept that. Don't fight it. Accept it. And if it's difficult, you tell Krishna it's difficult. No problem. See, Krishna didn't tell Arjuna, just do what I sent, you know, keep quiet. Don't ask any questions. 
You're just a stubborn brat. Just fight. No. Krishna was uh, hearing him. He was counseling him. He was seeing, trying to understand his perspective, giving him a different perspective, trying to bring him on the path. So Krishna is not hard-hearted. He's, he's, he's karunamaya. He's full of compassion. Karuna Sindhu, it's an ocean of compassion. So if we approach Krishna, open our heart to Krishna, Krishna will be very, very kind. Krishna is very happy with that. So we should do that. Yeah. And then more we develop relation with Krishna, uh, our relationship will be molded and guided. And then you'll see Krishna will work magic. Krishna will do whatever he wants. Ultimately, we will perfect our relationship, return back in his eternal service for his pleasure. Vantrachimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Shilaprabhapad ki jai, Nitai, Gopramanande, Hari Hari, Om.